Hey everybody, it's Zen again. I did a video on this a long time ago. It was more, it was just an audio, um, but it's something that just kind of pops up, and I hear so many people talking about this, and they, it, it's so very important, and nobody really, they're they're just spitting off at the at the mouth about an idea that they don't quite understand with this CERN, this Nelson Mandela, the Mandela effect, and I'm gonna try to say the same thing again in a slightly different way and then go further into sigils, symbols, magic and what this is who Nelson Mandela was and people's belief that he died a certain time and then he died again let's start here you don't own the television stations you're not part of the occult that runs the information that's provided to you you don't participate in gematria I'm assuming meaning these people that are putting out these images and these stories it's their images and their stories that they're telling you and for all you know that they, there really was a story of Nelson Mandela dying and then there was another one it, it's it's really irrelevant to what they're saying is going on especially when we consider what magic is and what part we play in it so this mandela that we can see on the right hand side as i was saying before in the last audio nelson mandela is just an icon he's a locator point he's an image that now portrays something that should be yours you create a mandala and what they've done is taking that mandala because a mandala here I'll, I'll scroll down here for you is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional experience and this is drawn out in front of you and this is also going on inside of your head so this is not only has to do with cymatics it has to do with even speaking a mantra forth and so those vibrations that occur create sound waves they create cymatical references they create these which then turns into what you'd see as a three-dimensional one of these and what CERN has done and what all of these other these silly harebrained notions that Nelson Mandela Mandela has anything to do with this other than the magicians and the uh, I would call them I, I guess to some degree uh, technological shamans using technology to garner your interest and design your mind around their theories and practices meaning if they can be magicians and do these things whether or not they're using technology or their own minds then you can do these things too and instead of you being interested in what's going over here on the right and building your own temple out of a, making a mandala, whether that's physically writing out a mandala on paper and using all sorts of uh, tools in front of you, which is one option and a great option, it's also using your mind. But now your mind says, no, it's Nelson Mandela, CERN did this, and they just hijacked all of your, your mind to believe that even if they are changing space and time, then once again, so can you. Even if, they're, even if they're doing it with technology, the highest technology is you and your human body. And the highest technology prior to that is your imagination, which is actually of even a higher degree, a higher understanding, because your mind and your imagination created your body and created the technology. So the technology can be only under your control. But yet you sit here staring at the television and sitting staring at the newspapers and staring at these computers and you can use them as nuggets of information and wavelengths to participate in and gain some knowledge and insight into things but when we become a slave into the ideas that are given forth to us rather than seeing beneath it and just looking at the structures and looking at the looking at the patterns of of how they do things uh, like using that as a blueprint for you to do it yourself instead we become victims of our own addictions and as I've spoke about before addiction is the word addiction it means language 
It's the language that repeats in your head to create an image that you spit out into three, 3D reality. <clears throat> and so if you continually look to this Mandela effect and the Berenstain Bears, and <laughs> I'll jump in here and I know it was Berenstain. I know it wasn't Berenstain in my reality. Uh, <laughs> but that's not going to be a trigger point for me to believe that CERN, well, and, and if they did, again, congratulations, CERN. That's awesome. I'm glad they could figure out how to use technology to do something. If they traveled through space and time, like they literally did that by going to the Astro Room and changing something, that's cool too. So what? I can do that. So you can do that. And that's the, that's, I think needs to be the lesson here for everyone is to disassociate from who Nelson Mandela is and start calling this effect what it actually is and call it a Mandela effect. So you can create that two, two dimensional space inside of your mind, inside of your room on a piece of paper and then push it forward out into reality and create that castle and that temple and that world that you want to participate in. So um, maybe I'll jump into some other things here that I wanted to talk about, like what the menorah was and some Jewish mysticism and some, some Kabbalah and the Kaaba and Christian mysticism. Or maybe I'll save that for another time. It's all wound together into what this magical thing is and you being a magician and allowing yourself to claim your powers as a magician. Because again, as we really get into these, these mandalas and these mantras and these sayings and these thoughts and these ideas, there are harmonics that are resonating with inside of your organs. Your organs are called such because they're playing musical notes. And so this has to do with the health of your mind and health of your body and health of your experience and wealth of your experience by balancing and harmonizing the organs within your body by using different tones and vibrations and which become these mandalas which become these temples so when you go in to do your dream work when you go into sleep when you go into meditation you can jump into literally one of your organs and it will be looking like this if it's in good shape and if it's all tore up you might have a bad experience there so anybody knows if they've had some bad meals or had a bad experience and went to sleep with that and their dreams end up weird so they've lodged in a memory, and it, back to what memory means, memory is water and light, and you get you store these pieces and packets of information inside of your body, and there's a way to release them with tones and vibrations and colors and harmonics and smells even, that's even the highest, the highest wisdom right there, because it goes up your nose to the most high, and it's no filters, so by using a really good, it's called a aromacology, or an aroma therapy, by using what they say is essential oils, but you could call it essential oils because it ascends you. So by using these certain oils, you can cleanse your mind, which cleanses your system, by cleanses the, the harmonics that you resonate and vibrate with. And then you can create new organs. And anybody that gets into even science, even the, the scientists will tell you that your body recreates itself every at first they were saying seven years and now they, they've got it down to 99% of your body is brand new. Every single atom in your body is brand new in, in about a year. It's like everybody knows your liver uh, repairs itself. I think it's every 28 days. Your stomach every, um, I think it's every few hours. Uh, but as, as, you, as anybody that really gets into this, your entire body is brand new. You go to sleep and you wake up and you're mostly a brand new person. But that's hard to perceive because you think you live in a physical, dense realm. And it is, to a degree, physical and dense, but your body and your atoms and the structures, they're just reproducing themselves. So if you want to reproduce something better on the outside, then you need to reproduce something better on the inside. And that's what comes forth to become your body, your temple. So I hope everybody enjoyed that. And I... I hope I covered everything that I wanted to considering Mandala, but it's just about taking your power back from whatever you're anchoring it to where it shouldn't be and, drink, and getting succubus or delivering power. And this isn't about saying don't share and give energy to people because there's plenty of people that do need power, energy, and help. 
And so when you have your foundation, you can easily give that. It's just like if you got $100 in the bank, it's easy to give somebody two bucks. But if you got no money in the bank, well, it's going to be really hard to give somebody energy, right? So start creating your own mandalas inside your mind, even in front of you. Start changing the way that you speak. Or, hey, some people need to stop speaking and just intone and correct their thoughts before they speak out into the world and create something they don't want. So cheers, y'all. Have a beautiful day.